Hi, everyone. Thank you for viewing our session today on Lyricist Research Infrastructure Communities. My name is Sheila Rabin. I'm the Program Leader for Persistent Identifier Communities at Lyricist. And I'm presenting today with my colleagues Paolo Guhilde, our ORCID US Community Specialist at Lyricist, and Hannah Rosen, Strategist for Research and Scholarly Communication at Lyricist. Today, we're going to briefly explore open research infrastructure goals and best practices, an overview of the research infrastructure community programs that we support at Lyricist, and then we will share a case study of putting these practices into action in our own Lyricist research workflows. In the last several years, open research infrastructure best practices have emerged as libraries and other knowledge-based institutions seek to measure institutional impact while also streamlining workflows to make people's lives easier. Institutions want to know things like how much funding their researchers have received, what research papers and other works came from that funding or came out of the institution in general, and whether those outputs are being used by other scholars. Of course, we want to do all of this with as little extra effort as possible. We want to save time and reduce administrative burden. And we want to contribute to making research and scholarship more fair, which stands for findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, which you might be familiar with from the Go Fair and Fair Principles Initiative. In order to achieve these goals, the focus is really on implementing machine actionable persistent identifiers that are connected with each other, ensuring that metadata behind these identifiers is accurate and openly accessible, and because the research and scholarly communication landscape really operates like an ecosystem, we all need to be on the same page in terms of using shared standards for identifiers, metadata, and also gathering statistics related to usage of scholarly materials. For example, persistent identifiers such as ORCID IDs for individuals and DOIs for content and objects can establish machine actionable connections between researchers, their affiliations, and their contributions, while also serving as a mechanism for interoperability and sharing data across systems. And when measuring usage of research contributions associated with an institution, within an institutional repository, for example, clean comparable standards-based statistics are needed for accurate internal assessment, as well as for benchmarking with peer institutions. The more organizations using these types of open research infrastructure services in their workflows, the more connections can be made between entities, making research objects more fair. To support institutional goals reliant on these shared standards, Lyricist serves as the community home for three consortial programs designed to lower the barrier of participation for using open research infrastructure best practices, the ORCID US community, the Lyricist Datacite US community for DOIs, and the IRIS US community, which stands for Institutional Repository Usage Statistics. So next, we will talk a little bit more about each of these programs. Thank you, Sheila. Our first program is the ORCID US community. ORCID US community is a consortium of nonprofit organizations with over 150 members, including universities, medical schools, healthcare systems, and grant funding agencies. The consortium supports member organizations through dedicated support staff and resources, and provides a national community of practice for adoption and integration, ORCID, or Open Researcher and Contributor ID. ORCID disambiguates individuals through a unique persistent identifier and links them to various systems in the research life cycle. With ORCID being platform independent, different vendor and open source systems can link to ORCID through APIs. These links save time for faculty and researchers through an exchange of information to and from the ORCID record, and it streamlines organizational processes and workflow through connections across systems. And in addition to ORCID, if you're not already assigning DOIs to data sets and other scholarly content that your institution is responsible for, you can consider joining the Lyricist Datacite US community. This program was started in 2021 as a way to lower the barrier of entry for organizations to assign DOIs to local content, 
which again contributes to making research and scholarly content more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. DOIs and other persistent identifiers such as ORCID and ROAR, which stands for Research Organization Registry, allow us to make connections between entities in the research and scholarly communication landscape so that we can better assess impact not to mention that publicly available DOI metadata makes resources more discoverable for reuse. The Lyricist data site program provides membership cost sharing, dedicated support, and a community of practice around DOIs in the US and beyond. There are other data site consortia in the US based on geographic region or platform, but if you're not already a member of data site or one of these consortia, any nonprofit organization can join the Lyricist program to get started with DOIs. For more info, see our program webpage and contact us with any questions. Thank you, Sheila. So the last program that you might be less aware of is the IRIS US Community. As Sheila said, IRIS stands for Institutional Repository Usage Statistics, and it's a platform independent aggregation service enabling institutional repositories to share and expose usage statistics down to the individual item level based on the global counter standard. This workflow diagram shows in detail the process of using IRIS. Basically, institutions install the IRIS tracker. IRIS collects raw download data for all item types and processes that raw data into counter conformance statistics. That means that anything that can be counter compliant is counter compliant and anything that is not covered in the counter standard is made as conformant as possible, even though it technically doesn't count under counter. Those statistics are aggregated in open access statistical reports, which can be exported in various formats. Because reporting is open access, institutions can easily share usage information with individual researchers and administration, compare usage information with peer institutions, and use usage information to identify national or even international trends. There are many benefits to IRIS. Because it is counter conformant, repository usage can actually be compared with usage for more traditional forms of published content within a library system, allowing for better holistic strategic decision making. And because IRIS data is open access, it can be easily studied by multiple levels of individuals, both within an institution, such as librarians, individual scholars, research offices, and deans, and in higher level granting and funding agencies to aid in decision making. There are two types of reports, platform level usage and item level usage. Within each report, you can look at investigations, which is the counter language for saying how many times users land on a page, versus requests, meaning how many times they actually open the research material on that page. And on the right side of this slide, you can see a screenshot of a custom item master report from IRIS. And as I said before, these are open access, so there's no barrier for anyone to see these. You can see lots of options for customizing reports, including filters for institution, the repositories within an institution, if there's more than one, time frame, and even item type. IRIS currently supports DSpace, ePrints, Equella, Figshare, Haplo, Pure Portal, Samvera, WorkTribe, and most recently, Esploro. IRIS, as you can see, is platform independent. It already works on multiple platforms and can be programmed to be incorporated within any other software available. This means that repositories, whether across institutions or even within institutions, can be compared to each other regardless of almost any platform they run on. Um, as I said, there are current integrations for IRIS listed on this slide, but we're also working with institutions who have completely homegrown solutions and they can create their own integration. So there's really no barrier to using IRIS. So let's put all of this together into our small but mighty case study. Normally, we as Lyris' staff would not have the opportunity to implement or use the products we negotiate for the library community. But we had a rare opportunity to bring all of these services together thanks to the implementation of our new research repository, Lyris' Research. It was released this summer on our DSpace Direct platform and it contains all of our survey reports, 
grant-related reports and our internally funded Catalyst Fund white papers and presentation slides. And I'm just going to quickly go over how we're incorporating these services into our repository. The steps may seem basic, but they actually point to the ease of incorporation for each of these three services. Now, you can see from this very simple screenshot here, if we go to one of our reports, the first thing you can see is that we have implemented DOIs because we are actually, Lyricist itself is a member of the Data Site US community. And we've implemented DOIs for all of our materials in the repository, regardless of content. Now, if you go into the Data Site form, uh, we have the opportunity to identify authors based on what data site calls a name identifier, which allows you to input an ORCID ID. This means that ORCID recognizes the DOIs registered within our repository, and if you, within ORCID, allow data site to discover works using your ORCID ID, they can actually be automatic, automatically uploaded to your profile. And we've actually created a policy that anyone who receives a Catalyst Fund grant from Lyricist is required to register an ORCID ID, which allows us to properly credit them when their materials are uploaded to our repository. The last piece of the puzzle is IRIS, and this is the one we're actually still working on. So as I said, we have the DOIs assigned and within the DOI metadata, we're able to input ORCID IDs, but, um, we have not yet installed Iris, and this is because our hosting services are systematically upgrading to DSpace 7, which has the Iris Tracker protocol built into its implementation. So once the Lyricist Research Repository is updated to DSpace 7, which should happen by the end of this calendar year, we will be implementing Iris so that we, along with all of our Catalyst Fund partners, will be able to see usage of our publications using counter conformance statistics. And actually, there's going to be a new development within Iris to search by item level DOIs. So really, all of this comes together to create a really clear picture for the researcher or the author to be able to get credit for their work. Now, these are fairly basic uses, but they are still incorporating all of the tools and bringing value to our researchers and our partners who interact with us, both within and without Lyricist. We're looking forward to new developments in all of these communities happening in the next year. And we just want to say thank you. If you are interested in learning more about IRIS, please contact me, Hannah Rosen, at hannah.rosen at lyricist.org. If you're interested in learning more about ORCID, please contact Paolo Guhilde at, <laughs> at his email. <laughs> and if you're interested in learning about the data site DOI consortium, you can contact Sheila Rabin at her email. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch this asynchronous presentation and have a wonderful day.